Hi, in this lesson we are going to learn some rendering techniques and produce some lifelike images by playing with the settings. This lesson is part of a SOLIDWORKS crash course on Udemy where we are modeling a race car part by part. You can download this lesson plan using the link in the description and the source files from our Udemy or Patreon page. So let's open a caliper part we made in the last lesson. Now to generate some lifelike photos of this part, we will experiment with the plugin called PhotoView360. Now this was actually a separate software called PhotoWorks which was acquired by SOLIDWORKS and renamed. In 2017, SOLIDWORKS also introduced a new add-on called SOLIDWORKS Visualize, which does the same thing with some extra enhancements. The benefits of using the photo view is that it's integrated seamlessly into SOLIDWORKS, which makes the task a lot easier. Now, to access the photo view 360, open the plugins dialog from the options. As you can see, there are two check marks with every plugin. The one on the left adds it to the current session and the one permanently adds it to the software. Now you should only use the latter option if you frequently use it since it makes the software heavy and adds to the startup time. Once you check it, you can see the tab called render tools is added to the command manager. Now producing some lifelike renders takes a lot of hard work and it involves changing numerous parameters which we will see in details later on. But for now, let's settle with the fact that there are two things which affect the product render drastically. First is the appearance which you apply on an object and the second is the environment it is placed in. The appearance defines the surface properties like texture, reflectivity, transparency and so on. You can add an appearance and then refine it further by adding the color, texture, luminance and so on using the advanced options. Now, the scene changes the properties of the environment that the object is placed in, like the lights, surface and the background. Now, just as we can change the appearance properties to further refine the results, we can change the scene properties too by adding the additional lights, background and floor. Now, we will cover a lot more later on, but for now, let's have an overview of some options by producing a render. So, let's add the appearance first. Now, as you will see, the appearance of the model in photo view will be a lot different and only there you can see what changes are brought upon by each option. But you can get a glimpse of it in the preview window. Now, there are other options too by which you can check but those are resource intensive. One of this option is the real view graphics which you can only turn on if you have a compatible graphics card. This can directly show the photo view image. The second option is using the integrated preview. This again shows you the photo view image but it will seriously slow down your system. So the best option is using the preview window. Again to maximize the performance, keep it at its minimal size. Now coming to appearance. SOLIDWORKS has a host of materials ranging from metals to organic textures like leather. You can also add transparent material like acrylic or even lights. So let's add the painted appearance which will give us the shiny car paint appearance. But this still seems a bit dull to me, so let's go for the glossy plastic appearance. So sometimes we must add some lookalike materials and properties just to get the desired renders. But there is nothing wrong with that as long as it gives the desired results. Besides, you're not actually assigning any material to the part here. This is just an appearance. The mass properties are not determined by it. To add the material which will define the mass properties and will be present in the drawings, you must go to assign material option in the design tree. Now, to apply an appearance to the whole part, just double click the appearance. To add it to the specific feature, just drag and drop on a feature and then without moving the pointer, select the desired entity. Now when it comes to appearance hierarchy, there is one thing that you must understand. The feature appearance takes precedence over the body appearance and the face appearance takes over the feature appearance. So if I should write the order with the highest priority first, it will be face, feature, body, part and the assembly. It also makes sense since if you want to paint the whole car red, you can first add a red paint appearance over the whole part and then add a different color over few stripes which saves time. But there is also something like assembly level appearance which takes precedence over the part and the body appearances. So to get the hang of it, try adding appearance at different level and check for yourself. 
The benefit of having the render tools right inside the modeling environment is that it makes it a lot easier to add the appearance exactly where it is needed. If you export the model to some other software like Keyshot, you will have to work extra to define the entities on which the appearance will be added. So here is a tip. If you are adding the appearance but nothing seems to change, check what appearance is suppressing the effect by right clicking the feature and clicking the appearance. Also, you can access the appearance tab using the little arrow on the top right corner of the design tree. Now, if you're not satisfied with the appearance that you added, you can refine it by clicking the entity and selecting the option. At this point, you can add a different color, maintaining other surface properties from the appearance. Also, you can go to advanced option to check further surface properties like luminance, reflectivity, diffusion, and so on. Turn on the dynamic help to see which option does what. Now, you will have to experiment a lot to fully understand the effect of each parameter. But it is required since only then you can achieve that picture-perfect view of the model. You will see more of these options later. For now, let's go to the environment settings. To add an environment, go to the scene option. Adding a scene changes the lights, floor and the background. Once you apply that, you can further refine it by going to the edit scene option. Here you can change the scene background, floor location and the floor reflections. An important aspect is the floor location as it defines the base and hence reflections. If you hit the offset floor to geometry, you can get the floor where it is supposed to be. You can also change the reference plane to set the floor location. You can check some of the advanced options too. From where you can rotate the floor or the environment which changes the light location. Playing with these options will tell you what changes are brought upon by each option. Now at last, if you are not happy with the illumination of the scene, you can add custom lights and see what changes it brings to the table. Once you are satisfied with the results in the preview window, you can hit the final render button. But before that, make sure that you have set the right options for the output image, which you can do using the render options. You can change the output image size, quality and type. You have further more options here, which you will see later on. For now, let's hit render. Once the image is rendered, don't forget to save the image. You can save a JPEG image or a transparent PNG image, amongst a host of other options. Now you can take one more step here to save time by reducing the output size and quality, just to check how it looks like when you hit the final render. This will reduce the render time while giving you a glimpse into the final render even further. Now depending on your system resources, a good quality render can take up to one hour just for the render excluding the time spent in setting up the scene. Now we can learn a lot more when it comes to render settings, camera and lights, which you'll see in the respective section. But here, let's get a few realistic images and be done with it. Right, so to recap, it is a list of tools and techniques learned in this lesson. In the next lesson, we will start with the routing tools and produce the disk assembly with the tubing. So don't forget to join us for something exciting on Facebook and YouTube and partner with us on Patreon to share our work and revenues. Have a good one.